Tonight, we continue to remember the life of former Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. We all remember her as the trailblazing judge who was called up by former President Reagan to become the nation's first female Supreme Court Justice. But for Brian O'Connor, she was mom, a woman who lived life to the fullest and someone who was as devoted to her family as she was to her country. Who was Sandra Day O'Connor? So uh, she was the most fun person I knew. She had an, a voracious uh, curiosity for all things. Uh, and she wanted to bite the apple wherever and whatever it was. And that took her all over the world in all kinds of what I'd call adventurous athletic endeavors, which is, uh, I'd like to think I'm carrying the baton on that, if you will. But uh, there's a lot of that that I, I, I think the other side of my mom that people may, might not have been aware of. You and I were just chatting about some of my skydiving career and I can honestly thank my mother for that because she had to sign the parental consent form as I was only 17 years old to allow me to make that first jump. But she did it on the condition that I never go hang gliding again because she found out about that and was not all too happy, but she was fine with the the parachuting. So she was good at deal making yes. and bargaining. And it, it, perfect, uh, well said, yes. Um, what do you remember about life before she got that call from Ronald Reagan? Well, in many ways, it's the same life that continued after. It was uh, family ski trips. It, we literally would load up the station wagon like the Griswolds uh, <laughs> with all Presents we'd open on top and the skis on top and the three sons fighting in the back seat and, and off to Utah or Colorado we'd drive and we'd go for two weeks straight and we'd, our last day would be skiing on Christmas Day then we'd come back home and, and so we did that. Over time I did it all over the world with mom and dad, skiing in the, in the Alps and uh, in Sun Valley. After she was recovering from, I think it's public knowledge, cancer, she went through breast cancer she was skiing in Sun Valley with friends. I think Clint Eastwood was there. <laughs> and uh, uh, she took a fell and, and broke some, broke a shoulder and, and, uh, on, on a nothing fall. And the doctor said, well, uh, Justice O'Connor, your bones are brittle from all the chemotherapy you went through. You can't ski anymore. So for the trips going forward, she would be in the snow while we're all skiing in waders, fly fishing. And that's what launched her fly fishing career. So, and she went on to do that all around the world, from Mongolia to Alaska and, and everywhere in between. And uh, because she had been down this road with your dad with Alzheimer's, when she started showing signs of dementia, she was an intelligent woman. She was very sharp. It had to be hard on her. But she, I mean, there was frustration. Um, I'm, it's hard on anyone, but uh, I, I never saw kind of these uh, bouts of anger or frustration over the situation that she was in. And, and my job, frankly, in visiting with her during the decline, I just go in there and to try to make her laugh and, and tell her what's been going on of late, tell her, tell her some funny stories, and... Uh, and just make it, make it easy like that. One of the pictures that really caught my eye, and, and I've always thought you can, you can get a sense so many times through a picture more than you can through anything else, the printed word or anything else. You sent us a picture of you, and I'm assuming it was during COVID, standing outside the window in yes. your care facility and, and chatting with her. And, and that really... It brought me a wide range of emotions because my dad passed during COVID and we were separated. I couldn't even go to visit him when he was critically ill. How, what do you remember about that time? So I've forgotten, I shared that photo and I'm glad you brought that up. So that, that, that was a frustrating time for everyone. And for her at that moment, she, it, it still wasn't clear to her, why couldn't we come in? <laughs> you know, I, you see me out of bandana, I just come back from skydiving, Scott O'Connor's outside the window, and there we are speaking through a screen. And, and uh, that was a tough time to not be able to go in and give her the hug you want to give her. 
but you know what? We all went through that uh, worldwide, not just here in the U.S. So, uh, but that, I actually do love that photo. They called her a daughter of Arizona, which is maybe one of the greatest compliments you can have to be someone who is referred to in the same sentence as the state that she loved, served in, came back to after her service in Washington. How does that sit with you, a daughter of Arizona for your mom? I, I love it. You know, she, she was the first woman inducted into the Cowgirl Hall of Fame. And uh, she was every bit the cowgirl growing up, and, and that's what Arizona's been. It's been the three C's, cattle, cotton, and copper. And uh, I, I think we couldn't do better than, than to have that, uh, that identity. Accomplished fisherman, mm -hmm. avid tennis player, cowgirl hall of fame, golfer. Everything. And Supreme Court justice. I know, in a nutshell, basically super mom. That's what I heard him yeah. saying. She was the super mom. She was, and I said, you know, what was it like when you would have a family conflict? Because there's three brothers. Oh. And you, you can imagine having a judge as a mom. No, <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> but we all remember and, and respected uh, yeah. Justice O'Connor. I love hearing him talk yeah. about those memories. Life well lived. Yeah. You can watch my full interview with Brian on 12news.com.